My solo episode this week is on the importance of empathy. It was, I think it's something that's not discussed enough and not enough people today are displaying it. Can you just tell me from your viewpoint, why do you think empathy is so vital? Oh my gosh. I mean, I think that that's what's missing. I think that's really what we need more than anything else. In fact, we live in an empathy deficit. You can talk about the economy or you can talk about anything else, but the real problem is there's an empathy deficit because we are one. What I notice is that when you talk to people who feel sad, they feel alone. When you talk to people who feel sad, they don't feel needed. They don't feel seen. And that's so ridiculous. Pain is inevitable. Pain is part of the process, but suffering is optional. And the majority of suffering that I see is unnecessary, is that people don't feel seen by other people. People have lost the empathy in their life that they need. And it starts with having empathy for yourself, right? As the Bible famously say, you love your neighbor like yourself. That means you can't carry shame and then think you're going to have empathy for somebody else because everything's a hologram. So if you're judging yourself, if you're constantly flogging yourself for what you're not enough or this or that, you're not going to project empathy in the world. So it starts with, you really want to change the world, right? You really want to help Ukraine. You could send money, but you really want to help. It's like heal, right? Hurt people, hurt people. And if thoughts can actually make us sick, which they've now turned out, it's true. It creates, we think a bad thought, scary thought. It creates cortisol in the body, which makes us sick, creates inflammation. But thoughts can make us well. So we can make each other well. We can show up for each other, but we have to first have the presence. I've heard so many people say this to me, but one of my teachers said it too, which is when you have tea in the morning, invite your whole self. First of all, your big self with the capital S, which is what you said. I'm generous, I'm prosperous, I'm creative. That's the Deepak I am. But then even the ego, everyone who's listening right now has a part of themselves that's brave, part of themselves that's terrified, a part of themselves that self-sabotages, a part of themselves that's a liar, a part of themselves that's a fraud. We all have aspects of the ego because the ego is it's broken. That's okay. Right. Just welcome it. Welcome it. And then it's easier for you to give empathy to other people. But in everything I do, even in business, Seth Godin, who I mentioned before, he says business, when it's done right, when it's successful, it's a, it's radical empathy. It's really listening. It's really understanding how to solve someone else's problem, how to tell someone else the story that helps them get from where they are to whatever they need. Right. So empathy is the glue. And um, when we slow down and we focus on that, if, if, if everyone did that every day, just a little bit, when Dr. Phil was on my show, he said, if you feel like you're missing anything in your life, give it away to someone else. So if you're feeling you want a little more love in your life, or you feel a little lonely, or you feel a little sad or feel a little alone, make someone else feel less alone, right? Go knock on your elderly neighbor's door, visit her once a week, just say hello talk to somebody, reach out to somebody. And it's amazing how what you give, you get back. It's one of the biggest aspects of what I do. And I really feel it. And I can feel it from you as well. I feel that people walk around living quiet lives of desperation, that inside people feel oftentimes very invisible. And I don't want that. That's the thing that hurts me the most. I think I relate to it too, as a kid with my parents going through what they went through and me kind of just like, standing there left sort of alone. I felt that way. And so I like to just, I guess I'll end by saying give love for no reason, because I think that people think that love is earned. If I know you long enough, I give you enough rides to the airport. If I am cool enough, you'll love me back. Love by definition is for no reason. Otherwise it's not love. It's something else. It's a transaction. So that's where it starts. It's interesting how often we don't just give love generously for no reason at all. So the more we practice that, maybe then we can do that with ourselves and love for no reason. Whether you have, have millions of downloads or not, you could still be loving and you can still love who you are and how you're choosing to show up and be a gift in this world without putting all of this pressure on yourself, it, it just, it keeps going back to empathy, doesn't it?